Hi everyone and welcome back. Uh, since uh, my last video was about unhauling watercolors, um, I wanted to show off my studio palette um, as it is now. Um, I've got a mix of professional watercolors and handmade watercolors from Etsy and they're all um, unique and different and uh, I love them for different reasons. Uh, I do have one space missing and that's for um, a gold um, watercolor that I'm waiting to arrive. Uh, once that's there, um, it's gonna be complete. Um, I do switch colors here and there from time to time uh, just because if if I don't feel like they're being used, I switch it for something something different. But uh, yeah, let's let's go through one by one and talk about these. So the first, I'll go in in rows, starting from left to right. So the first one, I've got a full pan of uh, nectar watercolors apricot and this one i use for skin tones it's a nice nice blushy um reddish um orangey kind of color uh, and it's a convenience mix so and i'm all about those as you can tell um so yeah ju just a fantastic one um to get for um skin tones Next one is Nectar Watercolor Sakura, and this one I use uh, as a blush on top of apricot um, or like shadows, like um, my style is very cartoony, so um, I add like redness to the cheeks, top of the ears, uh, nose, uh, elbows and fingers, um, and this is just a very lovely um, kind of muted, dusty, reddish color. Um, yeah, and I like it a lot. Next color is uh, Schmenke's Transparent Ochre, and it's that one here. Um, yeah, and this one's like an olive-y, um, olive skin tone kind of color, still for skin tones. I don't use it as much, but yeah, I don't know. Don't use it as much. So I might I might switch it at some point, but for now it's it's been great. Next color is um Windsor Newton Rose Door or Dore, um however you say it. And this one's um used for blush as well. Um if it's like a brighter bl blush. On, on the cheeks it's very lovely it's transparent so and if you do a light wash over over the cheeks it just brings them and makes them peachy looking next color we've got is a handmade watercolor and this one's by quartz creations and it's quinacrid on gold um i absolutely adore this one it's a granulating um yellow um, with like deep um, brownie orangey however you want to you want to call those um, granulations happening and I do like it like it a lot uh, next one is quartz creations transparent gold ochre um, I wanted to find like a really nice yellow uh, as you can tell I've got quite a few yellows on the bottom row um, but this one's a bit more muted down, and that's the, I think that's, that's the second, apart from, uh, the transparent ochre, um, that's, that's the last ochre I've got on the palette. I've gotten rid of the sienas and the ochres, um, and yeah, 
Next color is Shadow Violet by Daniel Smith, and I adore. I'm obsessed. For backgrounds, it's stunning. Um, can you see? Can you see the gradient? Doesn't that look like a like a sky, like a moody sky? And it has these different pigment separations here uh, coming through which I love so next color we have Daniel Smith kyanite genuine and this one's like a blue with some shimmer there you go you can see it um, if I'm honest, like this one's not my favorite shimmery one. I think I preferred um, Sujula Genuine, which is a, a purpley color with the shimmer. But um, for now, I decided to keep it, try it out, maybe in some of the paintings. Next color we have is Quartz Creations Asphalt, which is this color right here and can you see the lovely gr granulation happening here it's like a crackling black and this one's like a warmish tone um, and then the one next to it is a quartz creation castle earth um, and this one's a cool tone, black, and it's just stunning, overlaid over other colors, uh, and yeah, I do love it. You'll see quite a few uh, Quartz Creations uh, colors, and that's because for, for a time I have been just buying and buying, um, their colors because uh, they were amazingly great quality uh, paints uh, but now I'm sort of gotten back into the professional ones just because the illustrations that I do uh, I want to make quite vibrant and so um, a lot of handmade watercolors are um, sort of like vintagey moody they're not as vibrant they're like dusty and granulating and so if you're into that then i absolutely recommend it if not uh, stick with your professional watercolors the one before last just in the corner here is quartz creations burn gluconite there we go and it's like this warm hazy green with like some yellow separation um, almost chartreuse green's my favorite color so like I'm very particular with my greens um, next color we have is in the corner here and it's Quartz Creations Mint and it's as you can see, this mint, hazy, minty, pale green, and it's beautiful. Okay, let's go to second row. We've got a sample by uh, Nectar Watercolors, and I believe it's the same one, but as you can see, they're significantly different. Um, so I got I got the sample with my purchase and um, I liked it so much I put it in my palette and then I thought after using it a while that I do need um, a half pan and so I asked which color it was and um, afterwards I got the storm blue but as you can see it's like much deeper. The thing is with uh, handmade watercolors is that the batches will not be consistent um, and so I have the both of them um, at the same time 
in my palette for now. Okay, so those were both the same one and Occupy Two Spaces, so next we've got Daniel Smith Lavender. Um, if I'm honest, I don't use it as much, but I do like the look of it. Um, I will have to experiment more with this one, but um, yeah, just wanted to keep it in the palette. Next, we've got Schmenge's Cobalt Turquoise. Um, I am very particular with my blues, as I said, um, I did keep them for mixes, um, but to have a variety of different blues, I also have Helio Turquoise, which was in my un unhaul, I gotten rid of the tube, Phthalo Blue Green Shade and Phthalo Blue Red Shade. So I still have the, them in my palette. I just don't think I need the 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 tubes. Okay, so we've we went through these four. I don't have much to say about those blues. Um, blues not my favorite color. Uh, although in this palette I've got some blues that are standouts for me. So. And one of those is Schmenke's Pain, Pain's Grey Bluish. It's a beautiful, beautiful... Um, I don't know if a Pain's Grey is qualified as a blue. I call it a blue. Like a, a, like a pale grayish blue. Um, and it's perfect for like a, a rainy sky. Next color, which is... This one is Daniel Smith Moon Glow, and it's another interesting shifty color. I don't know if the sample is the best one, but you can see some separation happening here. So it separates between these gray and blue and violet tones, um, and it's beautiful. Um, yeah. Uh, next before last we've got Daniel Smith Indigo and um, I've gotten rid of the tube uh, but kept some in my pan in my palette um, and it's like an inky moody dark dark blue um, not much to say about this one really um, except for I'll try to incorporate it more into my paintings but for now there's no need to have a lot of it. Last one on the second row is Quartz Creation Stobush Green Earth. And it's this granulating, um, misty green. It's heavily granulating, as you can see. Um, but can you tell the difference between the professional and, and the handmade ones is that these are more granulating and they're more predictable. They're more like natural looking than the professional ones. And by natural, I mean, you can see the strokes, the brush strokes in this, and you can see the, the separation is chunkier and um, yeah that's Tabush Green Earth. Let's go to row three. We, I've got St. Petersburg Coral um, and I got this one to use for skin tones as well but it's not it's like a pastel pink pastel pinkish kind of color and so I don't know, uh, I've not found uses for it, except for um, some accents, um, like blush and such. But yeah, I've kept it still. Next color is Honeybee Pigments Handmade Watercolor called Tropical Waters. And my oh my, how I love this color. 
um, it's like a turquoise blue. Um, it's it's really really it, tropical waters is a great name for it because that's exactly what it looks like, and it's this color over here. It's quite stunning. Next color I've got is a Quartz Creations Bright Red Deep, and I don't know if that's the right name for it, but that's what was written on the sample, because that's not actually that's actually not something that I bought. That was um, on a dot card, and there was so much of it that I put it in the palette, and it was a really nice red, so I kept it, and it made it into my palette. You'll see a lot of reds coming up. Uh, next one is Quartz Creations Rubin, which is this color here. Um, yeah, this one's like slightly granulating, darker, deep red. And I do love it a lot. Next is Quartz Creations Carmine, and it's another red, and this one's more purpley, like it's almost like a magenta-ish kind of color, but I would use it as a red, but like it's beautiful. To me, like this, in my, in my head, this is like a Bordeaux color, like in the deep tones here. This is what I expected when I was buying Daniel Smith Bordeaux. But, yeah. Next color is this, and that's Quartz Creations Deep Blue. And this is a lovely blue. It's almost like um, Lapis Lazuli. Um, kind of color but like very deep and very pigmented um, yeah and I like it quite a lot next is uh, we've got Schmincke's Matter Brown which this sample is not great um, it doesn't represent it as well I use this one as a red for again like um, cheek blushes and um, shadow, like face shadows and, and on my characters. Just a great, great color, one of my favorites. Next, next to it, we've got Daniel Smith Opera Pink and that is the brightest pink there is. Uh, the thing is with this one, it's not um, light fast, which means over time it's gonna fade. I do want to make some light fastness tests with these. Uh, I'm not fu too fussed with um, light fastness at the minute. Um, most of my works are being scanned um, and to be reprinted, so um, I am using um, non light fast colors. but just a beautiful, beautiful poppy, um, poppy color. I did find a mix that was just stunning, which was, um, let me see, I might have it here. There we go. It's this one here, which is Opera Pink and Perlene Green. It made this, beautiful muted pink and I thought that would be a great one for a background just magical love it I need to try out a painting with um, something like that but never mind next one we've got is this one and that is, that is Quartz Creations Fuchsia Pink. And I got a full pan out of the dot card that was sent. She's um, 
Katie is very generous with her um, samples, like they're literally nuggets of watercolors. So if you test them out and you really like them, you could just stuff them into a half pan. Uh, yeah, this one's again like a very bright, almost purpley um, pink. But yeah, handmade, love it. Next one beside it is Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose PV15. By the way, I'm not. Um, I'm not saying the all of the um, pigment numbers out loud. Uh, for um, professional ones, you can Google that yourselves. Um, and for handmade ones, uh, I don't think there's a need for it. If they're still available on Etsy, you can look it up. If they're not, I don't see a point in, in giving you the pigment numbers. But yeah, Quinacridone Rose, um, yeah, qu quite a nice pinkish kind of color. Next is uh, Daniel Smith Bordeaux, lovely, lovely, but don't get to use it as much. Can you see what I mean by saying it's it's more purple than I than than like red magenta color. And last one and the third row is we have Daniel Smith Rose of Ultramarine. Um, don't get to use it as much, uh, but I did want a variety in my palette, so I just kept it. This one might leave. Not not really into this one as much. Okay, let's start with the row number four. These colors. First one is uh, Quartz Creations um, Caspian, and it's this gorgeous shimmery color. It's just stunning. Like I use it as a as a gold, but like it shifts from red to a green. It's just stunning. Really obsessed. One of my favorites. I do need to get um, another, maybe a few pounds actually, so they last me, but stunning. Okay, we, we've got the shimmery ones um, coming up. We've got Quartz Creation Sweet Pink, uh, and it's like the slight baby pinkish shimmery color. Not much to say about that. Haven't used it as much, but I do love it. And, looking at it in my palette. Next is Lavender Pearl. Um, same quality as the Sweet Pink, um, but it's a bit purpley. Lavender, as it says. Love looking at it. Next is Quartz Creations Iro, which is a blue pearl. Light, light blue pearl. I should say. Um, and I've used this in the backgrounds like on Sky sometimes. And it is a lovely, lovely baby blue. Next one's um, Quartz Creations Aloe Pearl. And it's a, it's a green, pale green shimmer. Again, lovely to look at. Haven't used it as much, but hmm. Need to think about something I could paint with this. Next, we've got this color, which is a Schmenke Terra Verte. I do like this mute down um, green. It's quite similar to mint, but not. It's not as evident that there's like white in it as uh, as it is with mint. Um, but yeah, just a nice color for greenery in the background. Next, we've got Daniel Smith Amethyst Genuine, and it's a, uh, let me catch the light. Can you see the shimmer in it? Or not so much? It does have light shimmer. 
in it. Hmm, it's not as visible, but lovely, lovely purple. Um, um, I am going to remove one of the purples or maybe both just because I have so many and this one's like one of my favorites and one of the ones that I'm kind of like not using as much are Daniel Smith Purpura Genuine by the way some of these um, swatches are made on um, rough um, paper and so they will look more granulated than than the others. I don't mind it as much. I, I do these uh, for myself. And so um, it's just something to bear in mind that this is a, like a granulating purple, but it is very muted down and kind of like muddy almost. Um, and it's just not one of my favorites, but for now I'm keeping it. Um, if there's other colors that I like more uh, that come along, uh, I'll definitely remove this one for sure. Next color is Daniel Smith Carbazole Violet. Um, and I've used this one for shadows for quite a long time, but now I've switched for a different kind of color, a different mix, which is more of a turquoise green. Um, and so, I don't use this one as much, but I, I've heard good things that like it's a great mixing color. So if you want if you want to try it out, then go ahead. Next color, where we are. So we're already here at the end. So the one before last, this one, is Quartz Creations Carmine Indigo, and it's a gorgeous imperial looking. Like it's um, it's very like vintagey purple, uh, stunning, stunning color. Uh, I do love this one a lot. That's why it's in my palette. Okay, last one in this row is Daniel Smith Wisteria, and I kept this one for mixes because it makes for such nice, dreamy mixes, um, almost cloud-like. And so, yeah. Okay, we're on row number five. Um, first color we've got here is um, a handmade watercolor called Coffee. And it's a reddish brown bronzy kind of color. And I do love the look of it. And then the second one is Antique Gold, which is like a brownish goldy kind of color. And it's this one and that one. As I said, this space is reserved for a gold half band. And these are gorgeous. These are by Stacy Illustrations on Etsy. Check her out. Um, she has some fantastic shimmery colors. But yeah, these are those. Next, we've got this, which is Daniel Smith Bronze Eye Genuine. And that's one of the first uh, shimmery ones I got for the palette. And it was in the Desert to Mountain set I got. And my oh my, if you do a light wash over a color, it's just gonna have the shimmer, but won't add that much color, um, or I should say won't change the color so much. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's nice for, for adding that shimmer, like that light sparkle. Okay, doke. Next, we've got the four favorite browns of mine, and those are Daniel Smith Bronacridon Deep Gold. I use it as a brown. Schmincke's Gold Brown. 
Schmincke's Burnt Umber and Schmincke's Van Dyke Brown. Can you see the variety in these browns and how deliciously gorgeous they are? This one's like a muddy, almost like a bark brown. This one's like a muddy color. This one's like, like a light tree, tree bark or I don't even know, like it's almost, it's almost rust-like, almost like, um, almost mud, almost mud-like. And this one's like, um, like a very, very light. To me, like, you could say these are like more oranges, but um, I use all of these as browns and they're great for like hair color and, and I don't know, leather and, um, other things that are brown. Highly recommended these. Okie doke, next we've got the greens. And okay, my favorite greens. I've got Schmincke's uh, Transparent Green Gold. Such a beautiful chartreuse kind of green. Love it. Next, we've got Serpentine uh, Genuine or Serpentine Green um, by Daniel Smith and it's a Primate color. Lovely, lovely, like a, a scaly, textury green. I don't know, do many of you get the, the scaly um, effect when you use this? Because if you don't mix it on your palette before you apply it to paper, it separates into this kind of like scaly texture and I'm just obsessed with it. Next we've got Daniel Smith Sap Green and that's my quintessential green, like can't live without it. That's like, if if somebody says green, I'm like, yeah, Sap Green. Um, next we've got Paraline Green um, and it's Amazing. I'm incorporating this one more and more into my paintings to make them moodier and it's fantastic. One of my favorites. And we've got Daniel Smith Undersea Green. And what a lovely color it is. It's, it's, it's literally like a Kelpie um, lagoon green and these are my favorite greens okie doke moving on next we've got um, we've got Cheshire Cat and Queen of Hearts so Cheshire Cat is this color right here I missed it when I was showing you the shimmers. And this one's... By... Who is this by? I'll have to, I'll have to include it in my description um, because I'm forgetting, but this, this was one of the latest one I got. Um, so Cheshire Cat in the shimmery one, and then we have Queen of Hearts, which is a slight pig transparent pigmented um, red with chunky glitter. Can you see the shimmer? Yeah, it's, it's very lovely. I want to I want to do some paintings with this because I, f I feel like I could do some fun things with this. And last one in the row five, we've got Daniel Smith Deep Scarlet, one of my favorite reds. It's such a deep, deep red, um, and it's perfect, perfect for everything. If you do florals, check this one out for like roses, um, because it's just beautiful. It's just so, so, so deep. Uh, I think I believe it's like a warmish red, um, but yeah, it, it's stunning. Okie doke, we're going to our last row here, 
I already mentioned the antique gold. Um, we're going to do the yellows now. We've got Daniel Smith Lemon Yellow, uh, one of the great ones to do for mixes. Um, if you mix this with blues, you get the most most loveliest greens. And I know that like a lot of these are <sighs> there are a lot of like mixing colors, and I've got I've got so many like convenience mixes. So like for example, lemon yellow and like a phthalo blue would make like a chartreuse um, green that reminds me of um, uh, green gold. Uh, or there's other mixes as well. I've, I was doing some today where you can achieve like paralene green like. Um, and sap green like um, greens but I, I'm all about the convenience I'm starting to mix more and more but for now I like to have my choices yeah so lemon yellow Schmink is transparent uh, yellow Schmink is Turner's yellow Daniel Smith New Gamboge Daniel Smith Nickel Azo Yellow, and we've got Schmincke's Quinacridone Gold. Um, again, like a lot of similar kind of shapes, but at the same time, to me, they're like very different. Three of my favorites from these is Turner's Yellow, New Gamboge, and Quinacridone Gold. Like, I can't live without those yellows. And the other ones I've got for mixing. So, yeah, these are my yellows. And then we have oranges and a red. We've got Daniel Smith Aussie Red Gold, Daniel Smith Perinan Orange, Daniel Smith Transparent Pyro Orange, Daniel Smith Quinacridone Burnt Orange, and Schmincke's Vermilion. Um, not much to say about these, except for, um, yeah, I like variation on my oranges. A lot of these I've unhauled in my, the big unhaul video. Um, but yeah, some of the pants are still, I'm keeping for now in my studio palette. Um, yeah. And that is everything for my palette. Let me know what you think, what you thought about these colors. If you had any favorites, please let me know because I do think there's like some del really delicious colors in here. Um, I will keep updating it from time to time. I don't know if I'll do as many videos on the palette um, just because there's so many changes all the time, but um, uh, maybe like once or twice a year, I'll I'll do a palette related video if I find some colors that become like very um, quintessential to my work. But for now, thank you so much for watching. This video is really long. Uh, I hope you're still watching. Uh, Please, uh, yeah, include in the comments which are your favorite colors so I know you finished the video. But for now, thank you very much and have a lovely day.